Welcome back to another series of Learn Penetration Testing for Beginners. In this video, guys, we're gonna talk about OS command injection. And for the purpose of this uh, demonstration, I'm using PW app. And uh, in, this, in this section here, uh, I am in the section of OS command injection. All right. So here, the purpose of this challenge is to teach you how to perform uh, command injection from the front end, right? And at the same time, understand how these kind of attacks uh, work and what kind of consequences would lead to, right? So, as you can see here, we have OS command injection and we have like a box where we can perform DNS lookup. So this site has a functionality where we can enter uh, some IP or website over here and it's going to perform DNS lookup like who am I right so if you click lookup okay nothing happens let's try something uh, like an IP so technically the results may not appear in uh, real time but basically we have a box over here and we can perform DNS lookups right and uh, the same applies for uh, the search form you see on other websites. So on other websites, we may see something like a search form uh, on the right or on the left or any, any, any input, any place where the user can input some, uh, they, they're required to type something. It is, um, you can try uh, OS command injection on it, right? So, over here, the, the, let's take a look at the uh, source code of this. Let's inspect the element and see what's happening in the backstage. So basically, as you can see here, we have command commandy.bhp file, which handles the uh, functionality of this input box, right? So we have here input ID, the type, text, the name, and the value. By default, the value is nsa.gov, but um, we can change that to something that fits our purpose. So that, that is the, the form behind in, in the, in the behind the stage. So if we try to see the uh, the source code of this page. Let's try to view, view the source, view page source. Let's scroll down. And we are interested in seeing the, the, this file. Let's use Perp Suite for this. Let's open Perp Suite and go back to browser. Make sure the parameters are the of the network proxy are configured correctly. Let's go for preferences, preferences, and we go scroll down, settings. We click manual proxy configuration and click OK. OK, let's go back. And over here we have purpose suite running, start. Let's intercept the request when we just type something into the box and see how this works. OK, we go to proxy, interceptor is on, let's go back to the browser. OK, so let's click on lookup, send the request to Perp Suite, and we're going to intercept the request and the response to understand the mechanism of this uh, functionality over here. So lookup. OK, so we received the request here, and we have the target, right, which is nsa.gov, and submit. Now all we have, all we have here is the we can change the variable right the value here let's say of course we can control that we can change that from the front end but my purpose here to to, to intercept the response so let's uh highlight click uh intercept the response do intercept response to this request forward all right so that is the response sent back from the web server so let's examine the response here and see, scroll down to the, um, okay, so here we go. So here, the command.php and the NS lookup, 
as you can see, the value is nsa.gov. The submit button will do lookup, but we haven't received any meaningful result. Apparently, for because this is a testing box. Uh, let's scroll down, down, down. Okay, there is nothing sensible down there. Let's go up. Okay, so since since this is a test box, uh, we haven't received uh, a meaningful lookup result, right? But in real case scenarios, guys, we're going to receive, uh, once you click on the button, okay, over here, we're going to receive the results that's supposed to be sent by the web server uh, regarding this functionality, which is the lookup box, okay? Now, the purpose here is not to receive the uh, the lookup uh, you know, result. Let's go back and, okay, over here, let's look, look up again. And let's go back to Interceptor. And here we can, what actually we can do here, we can inject, we can let the box perform uh, an action that is not meant to, 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 to perform, right? Which is, I mean, we can let, let it display some files and execute some commands of our choosing. So here, what we can do here, we can type semicolon, and we can type the command of our choosing. Let's say ls. Why semicolon? If you go back to our Linux tutorial I have published uh, on the operators of Linux. So basically the semicolon, what we'll do here, it will say perform the first uh, command, right? And jump over to ls after you finish, right? So it performed the lookup and then it's going to perform ls. Now the difference between the semicolon and the ampersand is very clear since the ampersand requires the success of the first command first. So if the first lookup won't work, the second command will not be performed or will not be executed. That's why I use the semicolon instead of the ampersand because the, 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 it, it might that the lookup won't work. Right, so I don't want to. I don't want to take care of the lookup. What what I'm concerned is I want to perform or execute my command. That's why I chose the semicolon. And let's forward that. Okay, so as you can see, we have listed all the files in the current working directory of the server, right? And basically here we have performed AOS OS command injection on this. Uh, website or this web server or this machine whatsoever. Uh, let's go back and see what we can do further. If you go back to the command line and on the right, on the left, if we establish some kind of listener, LVP, and let's let's choose some port that that's uh, not likely blocked by the firewall. We choose something like nine uh, nine. I hope this works. Okay, now we have established our listener. Let's go back to the browser. Let's look up again, go back to Interceptor. And here we put semicolon and NC192, the IP address of the attacking machine, which is my IP address, 1.7. The port. And of course, I will spawn a shell. Okay, let's try that. Let's go back. Uh, I was, as you can see, we have received connection from the testing machine, right? So now we have compromised the machine on a limited shell. So if I type IT, as you can see, we have here, we, we, have, we are assigned to www, the user of the web server. Who am I? Uh, we can see the version of the system running. And we can see, you can use that as well. Use the version. Okay, so here you have it. We have performed OS command injection and we have received shell back from the uh, client machine. Um, so basically, guys, whenever you see um, these kind of boxes that performs specific function on any website, it is uh, vulnerable, not vulnerable, I'm gonna say it's subject to your testing for this uh, OS command injection. Um, now, what, what, we, what we can do here to prevent these kind of attacks? Let's go back to the interceptor, let's cancel that. And let me tell you what we can do here. 
So if you go to lookup, and over here, guys, we should prevent any kind of these characters like the uh, semicolon, slash, all these kind of symbols should be prohibited in your code. So the users are not allowed to input these kind of characters in your website. Okay, that is how you prevent these kind of attacks and many other attacks, the input validation. Okay, all right. Okay, guys, I hope you find this helpful and see you in the next video.